and exploring the user interface in 3D Coat. We're going to start off with some basics such as navigating, adjusting your brush radius, and pointing out some common elements within a user interface that you'll find in most of the other workspaces or rooms as they are often referred to. Okay, let's start off by going to the upper right hand corner and covering the navigation bar. The first icon here tells you that it's adjusting essentially the ambient light in the scene. The second one is more of a spotlight intensity. The third one actually adjusts the position of the light. Okay, now we get into the navigation part and that is rotating about your scene, pan and zoom. This one adjusts your field of view. And these two allow you to frame the camera. The first one will frame the entire object within a viewport, as you can see. The other one, this icon is almost not even necessary here because the intention is to focus on your pen. If your pen is up here, it's not going to help you much. So what you want to do is use your hotkeys that you see here noted in this tooltip and that's shift Z. Okay, so let's say I want to hover over the thumb here and, and work in this area. I can hit shift Z. And if I hit shift A, which is this first framing icon, we'll frame the entire object. Okay. This next icon will restore you back to a default camera position. And this icon will toggle between your orthographic and perspective views. Now if we come over to this portion, we have a little drop list here. You can choose different navigation presets. Custom navigation will bring up a very large and extensive uh, set of options for a multitude of different functions inside the application. We'll click cancel and you have the different view keys so I'm going to switch to orthographic view you can navigate between the different views alright and obviously you have the hotkeys listed here if you want to know what your hotkeys are within 3D Coat the default ones. You can always go to the help menu, 3D Coat manual, keyboard shortcuts, and you have a, a list here. And you could print these out, that way, you have them nearby on your uh, desktop if you like. All right. So Let's continue on. You can add a camera shortcut. I'll go back to a perspective view. And let's say I like this particular view and I want to work on this side and this particular angle. I can save a shortcut. And you have a hotkey here as well. So control using your arrow keys. I'll hit control up. Let's go to another position. Okay. And control up. And now if I want to toggle between them, control right arrow key. Okay. All right. And as far as rotating about your scene, you can set it to rotate around the current pick point. So if I am put my cursor here toward the head, it will rotate around this. If I put it here, it will rotate about wherever I have my pick point. World center.
outbound box and so on. Okay, so now that we've done that, let's look at hotkey navigation. In 3D code, it's actually rather simple. If you elect to use 3D code's default, okay, you don't even need hotkeys to navigate. You can simply click outside the object and orbit about your model. You can middle mouse click to pan and this also works in many other areas such as the UV preview panel. If you find an open space, middle mouse click, you can pan. All right. right click and zoom, same thing. Any of these large panels such as the UV or the texture editor panel which we are uh, going to address here shortly, the same thing applies. Right click to zoom in and out right click and drag I should say middle mouse click and drag you could elect to go with uh, Maya defaults okay now if I drag you see it's doing nothing I have to use my alt key so if that's what you're accustomed to using that's what you prefer um, there you have it same thing alt middle mouse uh, alt right click and drag left and right zoom in and out. There's also ZBrush like as well. You can also turn off the tooltips at the bottom here. And you can do a lot of customization. Uh, if the layout here is not to your liking, you can, just as you would in Photoshop, simply pull out a panel and dock it somewhere else. Okay. And you can see a preview of where it will land it. So now it's actually sharing the same space with these other panels. Okay, so I'll place it there again. Now let's talk about adjusting your brush size. Whenever you hover over an object, you can right click hold and drag left and right to increase or decrease the scale of your brush. Right click and drag up and down will increase the intensity of the brush. You can also adjust these in the toolbar here at the top. Adjust the depth as well as the brush radius. This is a bit more interactive as you can see the result in the viewport as you're working. Okay, so let's point out some commonalities that you'll find within the application. Your toolbars will be to the left hand side of the screen just as you would see in Photoshop. If you go to Tweak Room, the same thing. Retopo Room. UV and the voxel room. Okay, let's go back to the voxel room just a quick second. And I want to point out that you have a number of different options for what you see here in the tool panel. If you go to the upper left hand corner, you can click this little arrow and it will tell you that you can hide it okay, temporarily. Now if you hover over here in the area where the E panel resides it will pop up for you but you can also hit the E key to bring that up so you can click this little arrow to bring your tool panel back up you can also click here to adjust the size of the button or to switch between icons only, a different arrangement of icons, as well as text only. Now the paint room, the intention is to be as much like Photoshop as possible so that texture artists can just jump right into 3D code and get started right away without 
a huge learning curve. So this will stay static. Okay, there won't be any changes here. So let's uh, now move on to the layer panel. Okay, much like much like you would have in Photoshop. You can dock these panels in an almost identical fashion. You have your different opacity sliders, different blending modes that you can choose, including colored specularity, which is uh, relatively new to 3D Coat. Also, emissive, which is glow. And there are tutorials uh, in 3D Coat's YouTube channel that cover these in some detail. Okay, so let's move on to moving individual layers. Previously, just as you would in Photoshop or Illustrator, you would click and drag the layers, but now you can see what it's doing is actually scrolling. And that's a new feature. If you want to move a layer or reorder it in the stack, you can go over to the right hand corner where you see this little move icon and now you can reorder it however you like. And obviously your visibility icon and it works exactly the same way as it does in Photoshop. If you alt click it will isolate just that layer, turn all the others off or the visibility anyway and if I alt click it one more time it will restore the visibility of all the other layers okay and that's a common theme throughout 3D Coat in any layer panel you have now a layer panel in the voxel sculpting room is your vox tree panel it looks very similar you have a couple different icons aside from the visibility icon uh, this one is ghosting Okay, it makes it semi-transparent so that you can work through it or around the object. But what it will do is it will block you from being able to transform the object in any way. So uh, that's a big plus. Now you have the little cube here and that indicates whether it's in volume mode. You're working with volume or if you click on it now you see a little line and that indicates you are in surface mode and that means as you're working 3D code is not having to calculate volume information it's only having to uh, modify just the surface mesh and I'll show that by zooming in and holding the W key okay and you can see the mesh that we're talking about here All right. So when you are voxel painting, you are actually painting on the vertices of this mesh. Okay? That is why if you happen to have a mesh in the paint room and also an object in the voxel sculpting room, you might see something like this. So if you do, that's what's happening is you have two different objects occupying the same space. You have a low poly mesh here and a voxel object occupying the same space. If you don't want the voxel object showing, go to the view key and uncheck show voxels in paint room. Okay, so we're going to stop right there and pick up in the next video where we'll cover some of the other panels such as the blending panel strips, options, brush options, and then cover the texture editor. Okay, so stay tuned.